Hey guys, uh, this is going to be a very simple short tutorial on how to set up your APM 2.6. Um, there's a lot of videos out there. They seem to be lengthy as far as getting this uh, the firmware on it um, set up properly to get you flying and pretty much all of the flight modes that um, APM has. So um, right off the bat, I'm, I just used this uh, simple platform rig type thing here to mount everything on. Um, you can take this as basically your frame if you want to but it just makes it simple for this video's purpose. So basically what I have installed right now is the APM itself, the GPS slash compass and your radio transmitter. Now before you get started you're going to want to make sure that your receiver is already bound to your radio. So that's you know I'm not going to go through that in this video so I'm going to assume that that's already bound and they're already paired together. Um, so basically your channel 1 uh, is going to go to channel 1, channel 2, 3, and 4 is going to go to 2, 3, 4 and then your flight mode is going to be on channel 5 All right, on the APM. Now I don't know what type of radio you're going to be using but in this radio which is basically the Turn G9X uh, flight modes is going to be on channel 6. All right, so and as you notice I have not um, tape down my GPS slash mag uh, compass because you're going to be moving that around that way you figure out uh, which direction is front as far as your compass goes. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so we're going to set up the radio first and all you need to do basically is start a new model and I've chosen the heli model because it just makes it a lot easier to set flight modes in the heli um, instead of a acro or any other model and as you can see I've already named the APM so <clears throat> you're gonna start a new model basically um, select heli and then the only setting you're gonna change is the pitch curve alright and that basically is what's gonna set your flight modes in this three position switch up here okay so right now with the switch on the up position, zoom out a little bit, alright on the up position and this switch right here, I have it set on zero all the way across, that gives you a flat curve, and on the middle I have it set at 42 and then on the third all the way down I have it set at 89 that basically sets your um, three flight modes the fir first flight mode would be the top position again zero second flight mode would be on the middle position that's 42 and then that's 89 on the third flight mode all right. So first thing you want to do once you get that set up, as far as the radio and the receiver goes connected, you're going to want to download the mission planner. Um, I'll have a link down below, but if you go to Google, uh, type in mission planner, it'll take you straight to there. It's pretty straightforward. So with that said, we're going to start up mission planner. All right. So we're going to turn on the radio, the board and including your RC receiver will be powered from the USB cable that's going to be going into your laptop or your computer so you don't have to worry about hooking up a external battery or a lipo so just plug that in and if this is your first time hooking up the APM to your computer it's going to need to install the driver so you're going to have to wait until that gets done once the drivers are installed you're going to go over to the COM port and it should be on the top right. It'll say COM something, whatever COM port you're using and it's going to say Arduino Mega 2560. So you're going to choose that one. We're going to go over to initial setup. At this point you're not going to need to connect. Don't hit the connect button. button. Just leave it disconnected. You're going to go to initial setup, optional 
install firmware it's going to get the firmware list and you can use all these different type of vehicles that you can use the APM on RG Rover, plane, quadcopter, multicopter, uh, helicopter so for this we're going to be using the quadcopter X it's going to ask you are you sure you want to upload RG Copter version 3.2.1 quad you just click yes and it'll Go through its setup. It's telling me right now that the board has been retired and it'll upload the latest version of firmware for this type of board. You just click OK and it'll go through its phase and you're just gonna have to wait. Alright, once that's done uploading the firmware, this warning will pop up. Uh, it's saying that if you're installing AC 3.2 for the first time you must redo compass calibration. Yeah we're gonna go through all that and just press OK and then you are done installing the firmware. Click on the COM port again make sure you're still on the same COM port and then now we can click connect. Getting all the parameters from the board. And then it's done. Just to make sure that it's showing on our map. And there's my copter right there, right on the screen. Now we're going to go back to initial setup, mandatory hardware, frame type, my frame is going to be an quad X, so we're going to click the second row from the top. Now we're going to calibrate the accelerometers. Basically what you're going to do in this part is you're going to hold the board leveled, sideways, both sides facing down facing up and then on its back all right so let's get this started and you have to make sure that it's perfectly leveled when you're doing this uh, calibration uh, you can use a square box that way when you're cropping it up against its side it's perfectly level I don't worry about it too much Let's get started. Just click Calibrate Excel. Place vehicle level and press any key. Make sure it's nice and level. Press the space bar. Place vehicle on its left side. Just make sure it's leveled. Press any key on its right side. Now you have to make sure that it's facing forward. That means the right is on this side. Any key, place vehicle nose down, any key, place it up, Sorry. that's my wife, hi YouTube, how are you, okay, press yes, any press key, <laughs> I'm sorry baby, I love you, you can start over again, place back, any key and then Done that's that. it we're gonna go back to flight data and remember this is the reason why I did not glue this down first of all because you're gonna need to find where the heading is as far as uh, where the front basically and directly that way is north and as you can see on the quad the arrow is slightly pointing a little bit northeast I would say north is directly across from the street so I'm gonna have to move the GPS puck until it's perfectly pointing north and you can see it right there and there we go and once you find where the front is then you're gonna need to tape it down so it doesn't move you want to make sure that it's when you're turning the frame that it's moving in the right direction 
it's not moving in the opposite direction. If it's moving in the opposite direction, that means you have to go to initial setup, go down to rotation, and you're going to have to pick rotation row 180 because that means your compass is upside down. And then now we're going to do live calibration of the compass. Click OK. And what we're going to start doing is we're going to start rolling it, moving it around until you form a perfect circle. And you can see there. And there you go. That is done and that's your new offset. Basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to make that nice perfect circle around the compass itself. Just click OK and then you're done with compass calibration. Now we're going to go to radio. And basically what we're going to make sure is that when you're moving the sticks it's moving in the right direction as you're moving it. So we're going to hit radio calibrate, click OK, OK, then move all the sticks to its maximum. At the same time paying attention to make sure it's moving in the direction you're moving the sticks. And also the flight mode. Right now I have set up three flight mode switch the three position switch and once you're done with all of that just gonna make sure that all of it's been moved click done ensure all sticks are centered and the throttle is down okay it's gonna show you all the values click okay and you're done with that one now on to flight modes I've already set up the flight mode. And the flight mode switch as far as this uh, radio goes. Um, drop down tabs and you can pick whatever flight mode you want to use for that switch. Okay. And then once you're done with that, just press save. And that should be it. All right, now as far as setting up the failsafe, uh, what you need to do is we are going to be using the radio failsafe and we're going to be disabling the battery failsafe. You don't want to use that, make sure that's disabled. And then the ground control station failsafe, you want to make sure that you uncheck that small box there because you don't want to use that. All right, we're going to be using the radio failsafe and what you want to do is click on the tab and make sure you enable always RTL. All right. And next thing you want to do now, depending on the type of radio you have, as far as my radio goes, I had to lower. I don't know if you could see it right there, the throttle endpoint to 120. Well, actually, raise it to 120. And that, what that did on Mission Planner is, as you can see, channel three right there, it lowered my PWM to 978. So basically what you want to do is that when you shut the radio off, if the PWM goes to 978, that's going to engage the radio failsafe because it's lower than 985. That made sense. Alright, so once that's set up, you want to make sure you press enter, that way it's saved on your radio. Raise your throttle to about 50%, which is, you know, that's about the hover point. And you want to make sure you're in as far as the 
flight modes you want to make sure that you're in one second here RTL okay so basically what you want to do is once your throttle has been set up to where when you shut off the radio the PWMs are going to go below the failsafe PWMs put your throttle about uh, at midpoint make sure you're in RTL as far as your uh, flight mode switch goes once that's done on your receiver you're going to have a button that says failsafe or bind depending on what kind of radio you have you're going to want to press that button while all those settings are exactly the way it's supposed to be on your radio all right once that's all done you can set everything back and as far as your throttle goes you can return that to normal lower it back down to 100 and save and that's basically it as far as fail safe goes so basically the point is when the radio is turned off, it's gonna it's gonna revert back to the lower PWM, and basically it's gonna be lower than 985 when the radio is shut off. Okay, right now I have my throttle all the way down, but my PWM is 1059, so it's above 985. All right, guys. So that's basically it. That concludes this video as far as setting up your APM 2.6 if you have any questions uh, leave a comment down below and if this was helpful uh, please thumbs up and subscribe for more videos alright guys thanks bye